Hello, my name is Jeff Henderson. I'm a product line manager for Arcare. The N7500 gouging system is easy to set up, easy to use, and let me show you how. Let's start at the control box. Keep in mind when using a travel carriage and track system to provide the forward travel, it's not recommended to attach the control box to the carriage. Centrally locate the control box in relationship to the gouging area. All required cables should be based off this location to the workpiece. These connections run from the power supply to control box and workpiece. First, thread the pipe nipple on the air regulator to the side of the control box labeled Air In. This connection should be wrenched tight. Once the air regulator is secure, connect the incoming compressed air line to the air regulator. By turning the adjustment stem clockwise, charge the compressed air supply to a pressure between 80 to 100 PSI. Next, attach the AC power cable to the connector labeled input power. Loosen the screws holding the control box cover plate. Reposition the plate so the connections are visible and tighten one screw to hold the plate in the open position. Confirm the DC power supply is off and then connect the positive power supply cables of the DC power supply to the bus bar terminal on the control box labeled power supply in. This connection must be wrenched tight to avoid overheating of the connection. Next, connect the negative cables of the DC power supply to the workpiece and attach one end of a number 12 insulated copper signal wire to the workpiece at the same location. The other end of the number 12 insulated copper signal wire should be connected to the ground post on the control box labeled signal wire. Connect the power communication cable to the side of the control box labeled power supply. The other end of this cable must be connected to the DC power supply being used to supply the welding current. Refer to section 4.04 .04, control box installation in the operator's manual and referring to the power supply control connection chart, locate your machine and make this connection based on the information shown. Now let's set up the torch head. These connections run from the control box to the torch head. First, mount the torch head using the mounting hardware supplied with the N7500 package. Feed the DC power cables through the black rubber cable boot and connect the DC power cables to the torch head bus bar and connect the opposite ends to the bus bar terminal on the back side of the control box labeled power supply out. These connections must be wrenched tight to avoid overheating the connection. Once secure, be sure to slide the cable boot over the bus bar on the torch head. Return the control box cover plate to its original position and tighten both screws. Next, thread the 3 8 inch NPT threaded connector on the air hose assembly to the torch head 90 degree elbow and the opposite end to the side of the control box labeled air out. Slide the rubber boots over the connection on the torch head and control box. Connect the torch head motor cable assembly from the cable connection on the torch head to the connector on the side of the control box labeled torch head. Finally, Let's connect the remote pendant to the control box. 
Connect the remote pendant cable assembly to the remote pendant and to the control box outlet labeled Pendant. Plug the Travel Systems grounded power cord into the receptacle labeled Power Outlet. You are now ready to position the torch head and insert the electrode. Positioning the torch head should be done based on shop conditions and application. Start off by positioning the torch head above the workpiece. Use the supplied angle gauge to set the torch angle, electrode stick out, and align the air nozzle. The air should flow between the electrode and the workpiece. You are now ready to insert the electrode. It is important to note that data used in the operator's manual is based on a 45 degree electrode angle. However, you can use electrode angles from 45 to 60 degrees that best fits your application. First, set the electrode guide block for the electrode diameter being used by loosening the thumb screw, adjusting the guide block, and then tightening the thumb screw again. Push the electrode release lever down and insert the electrode female end first into the rear of the torch head until it protrudes through the nozzle. The two-legged spring and protective shield should rest squarely on top of the electrode. To check their positions, look down the rear of the torch. If the spring and shield are pushed to either side, withdraw the electrode and insert it again. Once the electrode is set, release the electrode release lever. Flip the power switch located on the side of the control box to the on position. The electrode will retract for several seconds and stop. The remote pendant LCD window will illuminate showing the menu setting as the default display. You are now ready to begin setting up the parameters for your gouging job. Start button. Stop button. Press the start button to begin gouging. Press the stop button and gouging stops. This is the rough machining button. Press this button to stall the electrode while maintaining current to the torch head. Release and the electrode begins feeding. Use the mode selector button to scroll down to the parameter guide. Press OK this brings you to the screen where you can select the carbon size and the gouge depth you will be gouging. Scroll down to the diameter. Press the OK button. Rotate the potentiometer dial to select the desired carbon size. Once selected, press OK. Scroll down to gouge depth. Press OK. Use the dial to select desired gouge depth. Press OK. In this example, the output of the information entered lets the operator know they should be running at 850 amps and a travel speed of 35 inches per minute. Scroll to the back position, press OK to return to the main screen. With the power mode set to CC, use the mode selector button to scroll and display voltage. In this example, 42 volts is displayed. To change voltage, press OK. Use the dial to select a voltage ranging from 40 to 44 volts. Once desired voltage is selected, press OK. If your setting is CV, your amperage will display here. And in this example, for half inch carbon, it's 850 amps. Use the mode selector button to scroll down to travel delay. This is the time that the electrode will arc at the start of the gouge before the travel system energizes. To change, press OK. Select the setting you need by using the dial. Then press OK. Use the mode selector button to scroll to no current detect. Press OK. There are three options. The normal setting will shut down the gouging sequence if it does not detect a current for 0.4 seconds. Special provides for a 0.8 second detect. Off requires the operator to manually press the stop button. For this example, we will select Normal. Press OK. This is the retract button. This is the feed button for the electrode. This is the manual jog of the travel system. While operating the system from the remote pendant, it is important to remember 
The arrow keys on the left are used to manually feed and retract the electrode. Use the up and down mode selector buttons on the right to scroll through the menu settings. When the menu option is highlighted, press OK and adjust the parameter by turning the dial. Once the preferred parameter appears on the LCD display, press OK to lock the specific settings and return to the menu. For additional questions about the Arc Air Matic N7500 gouging system, please contact your local Thermodyne representative or Thermodyne customer care agent at 1-800-426-1888.